Rune Bradland, thank you very much for your time. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, my name is uh, Rune Bratland. I am the CEO of Skadidi Service, a small pest control company in the west part of Norway. I'm also the chair of the Norwegian Pest Control Association, and I'm a board member of SIPA. Mm -hmm. So Rune, um, as a part of SIPA, so European, perspe European perspective, and as the CEO of your own business in Norway, how did the COVID crisis and the virus and the lockdowns, etc., uh, how did you experience it in Norway? Uh, actually, we've been quite uh, uh, fortunate here in Norway. Um, at first, of course, we was uh, afraid of what was going to happen. It, it was a crisis that locked on most of the businesses in Norway. They was quite quick to shut them down. Um, after a while, we was uh, able to uh, be uh, listed as key workers mm -hmm. in our country. Uh, so we can operate as normal because yeah. there was different rules for moving from one community to another community and uh, they can stop there on the border and say you can't come in here because we don't yeah. have COVID-19 here mm -hmm. but with this uh, message from the government that we are key workers that actually could uh, uh, help us moving from one community to another. And uh, as key workers the normal procedure as service has gone pretty much as normal. With some precaution, of course, we have to check uh, with elderly people and so we don't go into so many people anymore and we do out, uh, outside services. But most of our commercial business has gone as normal. The one part that has been slightly reduced is the sale to new people. Uh, that has been uh, a drop. And I will think that is the same for the bigger company in Norway as well. So Norway has a specialty, I think, uh, but it's a rather a Scandinavian thing, maybe, that you sometimes the bigger companies in your nation deal with insurances directly, right? Can you explain that to anybody that's not familiar with it? Yeah, um, the insurance company has a policy that they will help people in, in every situation. Uh, for a few years back, uh, they included different types of pests like insects, rodents and whatsoever. Uh, they uh, offer a free inspection uh, for the clients uh, and they have engaged uh, the press controllers mm -hmm. to do this inspection, uh, everything that's regarding to pest related issues. And we will uh, evaluate and see what's the problem in, report back to the insurance company. Mm -hmm. And most of the cases they get uh, the problem fixed through the insurance company just paying a small fee uh, for, for this job. Yeah, interesting. I mean, that's, that's I think, to my, at least to my knowledge, uh, correct me anybody if I'm wrong, but um, uh, that's a very special thing for uh, especially Norway, Sweden. Uh, I don't know if Finland is the same or even Denmark. Um, but um, dealing with an insurance company means if you were a national um, uh, pest control manager uh, with you know, like a large company, you would deal with a couple of insurances rather than dealing with, let's say, thousands of clients. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. But there's also a way around this because uh, my company has been a partner for one of the bigger companies. So yeah. we get the share of uh, the uh, insurance jobs. All right, gotcha. Uh, so we go through a bigger company uh, because the insurance company want only a few contacts. If oh. they should manage all the small one, it's much more administrative for them to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, they go through the bigger one and the bigger one goes to us, the smaller, because there's so much to do, they can't handle it themselves. Okay, understood. So they, so seek, they seek small smaller partners and we, the smaller company, seek them because we want a part of these uh, jobs that come in. Yeah. So it's a benefit for both. Yeah, win-win. Great. Yeah. Um, Rune, uh, what do you do at SIPA and why is the European network of pest managers and our industry so important? Uh, I, my job in, in SIPA, I'm a board member, as you said. My uh, main object in the, the board is uh, one of two leaders of the training sex, the section, yeah. uh, dealing with the memorandum of understanding, yeah. uh, trying to build up uh, a standard for training for pest controllers. Uh, so we can have a minimum of stainer and make a difference between what's a trained professional pest controller and what's a professional uh, 
because there are no clear definition as it per, per, per now. And um, to make this difference, I hope that we can have access to more of the available uh, solution for treatment of rodents. Mm -hmm. Super. So you just mentioned the memorandum of, of understanding, and I know that uh, SIPA called out for many, many people in the industry to sign it. Um, I, of course, know why it's so important to sign it, but can you, in your own words, as a member of the board of SIPA, uh, explain why the memorandum of understanding, which has a highlight or a focus on training, on IPM, etc., why it's so important to have many people sign it? It's very important that many people sign it because from the government perspective, all across Europe, there are so many different levels of training or non-training required at all to be a pest controller. Yeah. So this is a self-regulation of the business to raise the standard of pest controllers all across Europe. And the more they sign it, the more pressure on our own business mm -hmm. and expecting that the clients buying our services uh, are looking for those who follow these strict rules for how to operate, like EPM. Integrated Pest Management is the key word uh, to make a good solution for every client in every situation. You have to evaluate the situation bit by bit, see what's the best solution for the environment, what's the best solution for the client, and also the economic part of it. So it follows everything. So. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone can make good decisions, but you can't do that without the training. 100% agreed and very well put. Thank you, Luna. I agree. Uh, and I think the importance of the basics of IPM, and which are laid down in the Memorandum of Understanding, which I'm going to link below the video, um, is not yet clear to everybody. So anybody that watches the video, please have a look at the Memorandum of Understanding. I think SIPA put a lot of work in there. So thank you and all your kudos really to the Board of Directors of SIPA for putting that together. Um, great effort. Um, I, would just, uh, I would just add, Daniel, that the, uh, the Memorandum of Understanding is a document that everyone can sign. Mm -hmm. There is Good. no uh, really expectation uh, for uh, what you say, there's no high standards mm -hmm. uh, in it. It's just mm -hmm. the minimum standard that is required. Mm -hmm. And this minimum standard sets uh, guidelines of how to operate. So it's quite safe for everyone who wants to be professional in this business to sign it. And those who want to have a professional uh, service provider doing mm -hmm. the job in their site. Exactly. And even food producers or supermarket chains or, you know, even a McDonald's or whatever chain, just to mention one yeah. brand, could sign it if they support these kind, this kind of way of dealing with pests. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank and you. it's only a benefit for our clients. 100%. Yeah, agreed. Mm. Um, okay, Runa, I think a lot of people want to know a little about uh, how you deal with pests in Norway. So what is special? What is your, I mean, we just learned about um, uh, the insurance deals that pest control uh, operators in Norway have. Is there any specialty or change in how to deal with pests in the last 10, 15 years? Is there any trend or has there been a focus on some sort of pests, for instance, rodents or you know, mosquitoes, um, is there any trend towards digital trapping or green technologies, anything? Mm. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. And um, when I started this business back in uh, the year of 2000, 20 years ago, there was no training, no education required in Norway at all. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2004, we got the formal training that mm -hmm. we have to do in Norway. And with that training, we started to look at EPM. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been a slow process, but when I started, if you saw a bug, you sprayed it. If you saw a rat, you put it poison. So uh, that has changed. If we are now looking at uh, some bugs, uh, whatever, we look for solution that can do it in a way, sustainable way, with as less uh, uh, insecticides as possible, without insecticide if, if it's uh, possible to do that. And also we have this look at sanitation, proofing mm -hmm. and uh, so on with rodents. Mm -hmm. Because a rodent can't come into a sealed building. So mm -hmm. if you seal the building, 
why should you put the poison, poison in, in uh, rat poison in, in that building? Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. Agreed. So, uh, yes, it's been a quite change, but it takes some while. Since we started in 2004, uh, uh, it has been, what, is, what should I say, it takes more 10, 12 years before we can see really the big changes. Sure. And of course, with the new digital trapping systems, it's coming in. Uh, the problem is it's so little reference on how they work, and some, some of them, uh, there are some that is quite pricey for the clients. So um, most of our clients is private household, uh, so they see that it will be a little bit high cost to, uh, mm -hmm. to use them. Sure. So a lot of smaller company, company like mine, myself, or uh, using uh, still uh, anticoagulants uh, as a rat poison uh, to solve some problems. Yeah. Uh, of course, it's too high of a cost. We want to change, but sometimes it's, uh, uh, it's hard to get acceptance for a higher cost. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's very, I mean, in the end, it's a business. And if you offer um, or quote your client with a price that's two or 300% higher uh, than your current pricing, uh, you will get less work coming into your company you can't pay your employees etc so it needs to be comparable or at least there has to be some means of the value calculation that you see okay I use only 30% of the time because anything is digitized I can use my staff for somebody some uh, other jobs but yeah I think we're going there and I think yeah. with, uh, with time uh, there's gonna be a cost aggression uh, and things are gonna be really interesting to revisit in the next couple of years uh, and I'm sure you as one of the uh, uh, innovators uh, are gonna um, uh, yeah, be very curious about how that topic evolves. As you Norway, Norwegians always are. I was uh, looking at the Tesla statistic of uh, you using electronic vehicles. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, maybe Rune has already millions of thousands of digital traps in his company. <laughs> 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 it's not yet subsidized from the state, right? Uh, um, we should surely move to a greener line. Uh, and I think there's been a change because uh, there are more awareness of the difference between first generation, second generation, yeah. and what we can call third generation of anticoagulants. And in Norway, as far as I know, there are no evidence that there are resistance by rats or mice on first generation poisoning. So using first generation, at least we get rid of the secondary poisoning. So because it's uh, removed from rat's body so fast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, so that, that's a good thing, at, at least. Much more awareness of what we're using and when we are using it. Uh, so um, you, you did watch the, the video interview with Bobby, you told me. Uh, maybe you can tell everybody, uh, A, how you like the video, and B, what your personal experience with Bobby was like. Oh, my, my God, I, I love Bob, Bobby. So I'm <laughs> partly uh, colored by uh, my uh, admiration for him. He, he's so, such a good guy. And... Uh, I first met Bobby in uh, 2017, I think, in New York. Mm -hmm. He has a lecture on uh, the rat uh, situation in uh, in the city of New York. He yeah. also had a rat safari in the, in the nighttime. So it was quite interesting to follow him. Uh, and we were so lucky to have him at, us, uh, at our pest control conference uh, in Norway in the beginning of March, just before lockdown. Uh, and he is so straight to the point when he his main message is you have to be a biologist at first yep. to understand yeah. the rodents how they behave and what signs to see and then you can start whatever treatment you are doing in sanitation whatever yeah. uh, so so it's straight to the point so hmm. he has a really good man message and i think he reached out to the crowd we have was uh, around 160 people at our conference. Right. So, uh, I think they was uh, wowed by uh, his speech. If uh, you would describe Bobby's way of doing pest control in very short sentences, um, how would you describe it? Uh, I would describe it as how it should be, actually. You have to put science first. You have to know what you are looking for, know the behavior of what you are controlling, and you have to use the correct uh, measurements and uh, equipment to every each case. 
-hmm. it's, it changes from case to case yes. and you have to adopt and you have to know and you have to have these tools in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, he's straight to the point and uh, watching him and see him uh, at the street level, on the street with him, uh, it's, very, very it's perfect. Yeah. And did you, did you see a lot of, I mean, it's a rhetorical question, obviously, but did you see uh, loads of rats in New York in the, in the nighttime? We did, yes. And see Bobby and just pointing on some black garbage bin on the sidewalk and see, put your hand on this garbage bin and you can feel the movement inside. Unbelievable. Yeah. And it was on every corner. I think New York or other large cities, uh, probably also Bergen, the downtown of the cities, um, due to, you know, of maybe the lack of hygiene or waste management and IPM proofing of the old buildings, etc. There are rat problems um, always around. So um, Bobby is one of the eager guys that want to, uh, you know, um, diminish the rat problems in the downtown areas. And I think the key of his uh, speech is always was the IPM pyramid, right? So yeah, uh, yeah. physical control, IPM measures, cleaning, uh, uh, sealing the building, etc. So yeah, we've, I think we've all learned a lot of him. And I think if he would read our memorandum of understanding that we brought forward by SIPA, um, powered by you as well, um, I think uh, he, would, he would sign it too. I would think so. I would think so. I don't think he had any regrets uh, signing a memorandum of understanding. Yeah. And you are correct. Bergen, as other city, has problem in the downtown area. A lot of fast food restaurants, people going home at night, throwing a half-eaten uh, hamburger or a hot dog uh, by the sidewalk, and it's not clean before the day after, mm -hmm. after the rat has uh, their meal. So, uh, yeah, I think every uh, city. At least we have proper bins in Norway. We don't have yeah, plastic yeah. bag on the sidewalk. So uh, that's a good thing. So uh, hopefully, rest of Europe and uh, bigger city has room for a, a garbage bin, mm -hmm. sealed garbage bin. That would help oh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Really, really enjoyed yeah. it. You stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you so much. Stay safe, everyone.